Hello, in this video, I will talk about structure and function of bacterial cell. So bacteria are prokaryotes. We cannot see them in naked eyes, so we have to use microscope in order to see them. Now bacteria doesn't have good reputation according to the immune system. So they are like most classified criminals of immune system. And such some bacteria like Vibrio cholerae are actually accused with the case of causing damage and bloody diarrhea to the body and indeed not only cholera but also bacteria can cause tuberculosis, gastric ulcer, meningitis, skin abscess, leprosy, anthrax and even can typhoid so they could be quite harmful but all bacteria are not harmful only one out of 20 bacteria turned out to be pathogenic and bacteria are mostly harmless now you would be amused to know that you have more bacteria in your body than your own body cell and these bacteria are mostly present in your gut forming your gut microbiome you would be amused to know as well that bacteria is used to produce food beverages like alcohol vinegar etc also bacteria could be used in sewer, sewerage treatment plant or bacteria could be also used for biofuel production also, bacteria plays a vital role in biological and biotechnical research because using the bacteria we can perform a lot of cloning work. Now let's just look at a bacterial cell. A bacterial cell has the outermost layer which is known as the cell wall. It sort of helps the bacteria to protect it against the harsh environment and also maintain the osmolarity balance. Now inside the cytoplasm it has its genetic material though it doesn't have any nucleus because it's a prokaryote and also it has the protein synthesis machinery the 70s ribosomes now it has some hair like appendages known as pili and fimbri which are important for their reproduction and also cell attachment to the host cell membrane now also it has a molecular motor which is known as flagella which helps in chemotaxis and bacterial motility now we would look at the bacterial cell wall and how the cell wall is formed so here in the bacteria there is a cell membrane top of which there is cell wall now the cell wall is actually composed of two sugars one is n-acetyl glucosamine and another is n-acetyl muramic acid and they're interconnected by peptide bridges now we would just look at how these uh, peptide bridges and how these interlinked sugar moieties help to form the cell wall so everything begins in the cytoplasm of the bacteria where there is udp linked n acetyl muramic acid which is getting attached to several peptides in sequential reaction and forming nam pentapeptide and that nam pentapeptide is actually transferred to a carrier on the membrane known as bactoprenol now the bactoprenol flips it on the outer side of the cell membrane and performs an important reaction which is addition of UDP NAG to this whole moiety and now the basic unit for formation of the cell wall is ready now it can cross link with another such unit and form a small block of the cell wall and such units together in permutation and combination form the whole cell wall onto the on top of the cell membrane now based on the cell wall characteristics bacteria could be divided into two basic groups gram positive and gram negative and this division is basically due to a staining method which is in turn dependent on the cell wall composition now the, this staining method is very simple you first apply a crystal violet now crystal violet would coat the bacteria in a violet color then you add iodine and wash it with alcohol now the bacteria who, which has thinner cell wall it would be washed away by alcohol so it won't retain the crystal violet stain so gram negative bacteria has very thin cell wall compared to gram positive bacteria that's why they cannot re retain the crystal violet stain and when they counter stained gram negative bacteria are counter stained as pink or reddish whereas gram positive bacteria retain their original violet color now let's just talk about a little bit details in the cell wall composition now you know the gram positive bacteria has a hell lot of thicker cell wall whereas the gram negative bacteria has thinner cell wall and also outer membrane 
Now, what is different in between gram positive cell wall and gram negative cell wall is the gram negative cell wall, the pentapeptides are linked each other by direct peptide bond. Whether in gram positive bacteria, there are specific peptide interbridge which is connected the pentapeptides. And gram positive bacteria are also more vulnerable to antibiotics. Now, why is so? The, the bacterial cell wall is the most protective structure for a bacteria. Now, somehow, if the cell wall is disrupted, then the bacteria is more vulnerable to death or destruction. So, let's see what happens. The whole process of the way antibiotics work is dependent upon how the cell wall is formed. The last reaction is the the last reaction during the uh, cell wall formation is the formation of the peptide bridge between uh, mesodiaminopimilic uh, acid and the dialanine. Now, this bridge formation is carried out by transpeptidase. Now, transpeptidase is an important enzyme which carry out this step. Antibiotics like penicillin blocks this transpeptidase. Actually, penicillin has a structure of beta lactam ring which is quite similar to the D-analyl D-alanine, which is normally the ac active site of the transpeptidase bind to the D-analyl D-analine. And penicillin has a similar structure, which can bind to the transpeptidase and blocking it competitively, competitively inhibiting transpeptidase and stopping it for, from cell wall synthesis and thereby bacteria becomes weak and more prone to osmolarity damages and etc. So that's how the antibiotic works. In my subsequent videos, I would talk about how antibiotics work and how are other aspects of bacterial reproduction, growth and their uses. So for now, this is it for this video. So if you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.